Hey Nick, what you doing out there? Oh, hey Gabby. <laughs> um, so St. Peter said that I could come into heaven as long as I match up the keys with the Ten Commandments. Do you think you could give me a hand? You don't know the Ten Commandments. I mean, <laughs> how'd you get this far? No, no, I, I do. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> it, it, it's just I'm I'm a little bit flustered. Um, but you obviously know what they are because you got in. So uh, what's the fifth commandment? Oh, that's easy. Thou shalt not steal. Yes, you're a saint. Thank you. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Works every time. I'm Nick. And I'm Gabby. Welcome to Catholic Central. Today we're talking the Ten Commandments. Which, contrary to popular belief, aren't heavy-handed rules to get into heaven. But rather, they are the loving words of a father who teaches his children how to truly love. Jesus himself said that all the law is based on these two commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But let's be real. This is much easier said than done. How can we know what love is? The commandments which God revealed to Moses are here to help us learn to love. They can be divided up into two parts, love for God and love for our neighbor. Let's dive into the first part, which starts with, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. This commandment puts God first, but check this out. He tells us, I am your God. Not just, I am God, but I am yours. Rather than imposing himself onto us, God gives himself to us. This commandment should be the basis of how we live our lives. It calls us to put God at the center of everything we do. We should constantly ask ourselves, who really is my God? Social media, my favorite band, my looks? It really makes you think. The second commandment is, you shall not invoke the name of the Lord your God in vain. This commandment means that God's name is not to be used disrespectfully, such as with swearing and cursing. And it's also a warning against the hypocrisy of those who use the name of God to further their own agenda. This can look like when somebody in power uses God's name to justify their actions. Or like when this guy said to me on the first date, God told me to marry you. Very creepy. Yeah. He already had a wedding venue picked out. Mm. Huh? The third commandment is, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. This commandment tells us to rest on the day that God rested. For Catholics, this day is Sunday. The Bible says that Sunday is more than just a day of rest. It is a day meant to honor God and all of God's creation, thus making it truly a holy day. It is also the day that Catholics believe is the new Sabbath, the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Catholics observe Sabbath in part by going to Mass. Others spend extra time in prayer or being sure to thank God on Sundays. Others try to do some act of love or service. So it is more than just going to the farmer's market or going to the beach. We also need to give the day the proper reverence it deserves, to take time to show our love to both God and our family. Let's jump into the second set of commandments, which refers to the love for our neighbor. The fourth is... Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land the Lord your God has given you. This calls us to honor the people who brought us into this world or the ones who hold paternal roles in our lives. The fifth commandment is, you shall not kill. Catholics believe that life is precious, yet every day these precious lives are threatened by violence, abortion, the death penalty, and more. But killing could also include indifference to people's basic needs, like poverty and accessible health care. Pope Francis said that not loving is the first step towards killing, and not killing is the first step towards loving. The sixth commandment is, you shall not commit adultery. Many believe that adultery is only when a married person has sex with someone they are not married to. In other words, cheating with a capital C. But Jesus goes further by saying, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. We should be faithful to our partners when we're in a relationship and look at those we love with respect. We are called to love the way God loves. That is forever and without conditions. God knows that this is the love we all seek. Now, the seventh commandment is, you shall not steal. 
that goes beyond keeping what is not ours, including that red blouse that I love so much. Elena, that's also theft. Theft does not always refer to physical things. It could also be sneaking into work late or stealing someone's work and claiming it as your own. Now we've reached the Eighth Commandment. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. This is a tough one. This commandment calls us to act with great honesty, even when it isn't convenient for us. We should never misrepresent the truth with our words, actions, or even silence. Oh, wait, Nick, this reminds me. Did you hear about what Miley said about Don? Mm. <gasps> Gossiping, especially when untrue, can also be a form of lying. And thus we arrive at the ninth and 10th commandments, which are intertwined. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These two commandments ask us to combat greed, envy, or excessive desire for what is not ours. This could range from your friend's clothes, their new phone, and hate to say it, but even their boyfriend or girlfriend. Now, this ties in with the first commandment, remember? The one about putting God first? When we covet, we replace God with those things we desire. We all have a God-shaped hole in our heart that no matter how many shiny toys we have can only be filled by one thing. How blessed are we to have the words of a loving father who wants to set our hearts free? Pope Francis explains, God is the only one capable of renewing our heart as long as we open our hearts to Him. I know that was a lot, but don't worry. If you haven't gotten all the commandments down yet, Catholic Central is here to help. If you enjoyed this video, check out our website for more episodes and other materials that'll help you go deeper. For Catholic Central, I'm Nick. And I'm Gabby. See you next time. Bye.